Finally! Hello and welcome to the last day of the biggest update TF2 has seen in 42 gamer years. Today we shall go through all that Day 4 has brought forth and shall feast on the remains of the hype. But of course, a quick sponsor. Manco Trade. A new TF2 site where you're able to trade your TF2 items for other items. The site is extremely fast, very easy to use, and by adding Manco Trade to your name, you also receive a 2% bonus. Right, day 4. As we predicted, the entire update is about global rebalancing and lots of fixes. It is truly global and massive, so many things to talk about. First, we have this nice summary of the new things and changes in general. Thanks Valve, I'm too lazy to read it all anyway. This includes the updates, improvements with the voice codec making the rage videos on this channel sound so much better. Whoa, they actually fixed a gunslinger exploit. <laughs> After a year and a half, it's never too late to change, but it's already too late for Half-Life 3. Finally! They fixed Demo's bottle! It works properly! It's been so many years, so much pent-up frustration and disappointment brings a tear to my eye. And of course, the relevant medal for the past competitive seasons. Good news for matchmaking addicts, you are no longer limited to 150 levels. You can now prestige your level like in Call of Duty. May the grind never end. Second. The party system has been massively improved, so joining your friends is a whole lot easier now. The most interesting part of this huge update is the massive global changing the classes. The reserve shooter has been changed to finally make sense and remove the massive advantage pyros have with it. The air blast combo no longer works. Bad news for the amazing spies among us, the ambassador is no longer a headshot machine from any range. If you hit someone from over 1200 hammer units, that's quite a distance, you will not headshot them, but instead just do a normal hit. To be more precise, the damage depends on your range, like rocket falloff. So to maximize your damage output with it, try to get closer to your targets from now on. Seems Valve was too lazy to fix the exploit with your eternal reward, so they just made the exploit a feature. Brilliant. But when you do disguise with it, your entire cloak meter is depleted, so it's not a buff. It's more of a nerf, because your cloak also drains 33% faster, so the left ranger becomes very important to combo with it. The scout is getting a nerf to one of its most classic weapons, the Sandman. It can no longer fully stun an enemy, only slowing them down. So no more home runs, nerfed. Just to put some salt into the wound, the flying guillotine can no longer crit players, double nerf. So no more fun throwing combo. The soldier's base jumper is also getting nerfed, reducing its air control. Great. But on the upside, the Mantreads are getting a great buff. They have 75% immunity to any pushback source and 200% more control in the air, finally making them more useful. The Bison is getting reverted back to its original design. Welcome back, old friend. I was waiting for you for so long. The Sniper's Darwin Shield is getting fully reworked to have 50% fire damage reduction, a good way to counter Pyro's new techniques. Also, you can no longer be overhealed while having the Razorback equipped, so the choice is obvious now. Be stronger against spies or pyros. To quit or not to quit, that is the question. The Medic's Vitasaw got reworked as well. Now you must hit enemies to collect their vital organs. With each organ, you preserve 15% of your uber on death. This caps at 60%. Interesting concept, but not something that would work in real competitive or even pubs that aren't brain dead. But it's nice to see Valve is trying to bring that weapon back to life. Not that it ever was. Also, the overcharge build rate with the famous Crusader's crossbow is reduced. So enjoy the nerf. The Heavy's pre-fire nerf of low accuracy and low damage can now be removed by simply pre-spinning for at least one second before firing. Thanks Valve. At least that's nice. The banana is getting added as well, with 200 HP healing per use, giving a small medkit when dropped. 10 second recharge. The NG is getting another nerf. Thanks, Val. We just talked about how much you messed up, Benji, and now you do that again. Thanks! It's the Rescue Ranger's turn, with it now consuming metal whenever you repair a building with it, just ruining the whole point of it, removing a major part of its usefulness. The Nerf Machine has spoken! The Pyro is getting his new Dragon Fury Flamethrower that fires a shot that deals 25 damage. Oh yeah! What? Wait, what? 25 damage? Uh, at least it deals 75 versus burning enemies. Also, jetpack! So it just launches you into the area you're aiming at, and you must deploy it in order to use it. 
meaning it's not a passive or extra ability like the base jumper. So no air shots for us. Gas Passer, as mentioned, is also getting added. A gas cloud that coats enemies with itself. Then you can burn them much more easily. Even enemies that have fire resistance, like Pyro, are able to burn in pure agony. Nice. And of course, the rebalances to the flamethrowers talked about in Day 3. Check out the video if you missed it. Alright, well, that's it. Amazing things were announced. You were excited towards the changes. Not the nerfs, though. If you want a closer look at the changes, make sure to check out TF2's site for more information. Thanks for watching. I hope we helped you understand what each day had to offer in a fun way, and may Gabe and return all those hours of sleep I lost because of the last four days. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video, and share it with your friends. The hype train is at its end. The last stop is tomorrow. See ya when the update gets released. It's going to be great.